This camera is amazing for what it is. Very important. First things first, I wanna let you know that Elgato sent me this product for free, but they didn't tell me to tell you anything about this. I could tell you if I think it sucks, I could tell you if I think it rules. If that's gonna color your perception of the video, I understand. Now, let's get into the unboxing. What's going on everybody? It's your boy, Sean Thomas from the HQ Boys, and I bet you're a first time viewer here because you wanna find out what's going on with the Elgato face cam. Before I tell you about that, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and tell me what you're most excited to use this camera for. Now, let's get into the unboxing. First things first, you get this little card and it just tells you to tell your story, share your vision, be seen. And it gives you like some highlight details about the product. You've got true 1080 60 quality. You've got a Sony Starvis CMOS sensor. You've got an Elgato prime lens. It shoots raw uncompressed video and it has onboard flash memory, which for me is the most exciting thing about this camera. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for. The Elgato face cam, everybody. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice is that this camera is way bigger than any of its competitors. You know, we're probably all used to having this tiny little webcam on top of our monitor, but no more. Let me explain to you why this thing is as big as it is. One, the stand is a lot more substantial. You've got a lot more options in terms of viewing. It feels a lot more stable when it actually clips onto your monitor. And you can unscrew this mount and put it on an Elgato multi-mount. You can put it on a tripod. Other thing that is so cool about this camera is it has a detachable USB-C port. I can't tell you how many times my cat just chewed the cable of my C920. It must have cost me like $200 in cameras before I just decided to stop buying those cameras. Now, if my cat chews through the cable, boom, I just buy another cable. And the other amazing thing is you're not stuck to the length of the cable. The cable that comes in this box is pretty long, but if you wanted to put this thing all the way on the other side of your room, you just buy a longer cable and you can do that. Now, this is the first detail that I noticed when I took the camera out of the box. It's actually got a lens cap on the lens. And to me, that just signifies that Elgato is really trying to take this serious as a camera, not just a webcam. You'll notice that it has a really large diameter for the lens. And that's because they're using real glass in this camera. And in the camera, it's got a heat sink to keep the camera and the processing cool in the camera and onboard flash memory, because I can't tell you how many times I would get the settings dialed in perfectly on my camera, and then I would shut my computer off to go to bed, wake up next day, boom, it's just destroyed. Now, that's never gonna be a problem again. But enough about this thing, let's talk about what else is in the box. They send you this nice little guide. And the thing that I really like about this guide is it's, you know, you normally get these white and black guides that are like 50 pages long, no. It's super simple. There's a QR code you can scan for some like more detailed instructions. It shows you all the lenses that they're using in this camera. It shows you where the heat sink and the onboard flash memory is. And the thing that is really cool about this is it gives you different ideas of how to mount and how far away you should be from the camera to get that perfect image fidelity out of the camera. The other thing that I think shows that Elgato is taking this very seriously as a camera is that it actually ships with this microfiber cloth. You never start a shoot without wiping down the lens. The fact that Elgato ships you this brand new Elgato microfiber cloth tells me that they really care about the image quality that you get out of this. And that starts with making sure that your lens and that the sensor on the camera is clean. So I think that's really cool. This is nothing super spectacular. I actually opened it. It came in a nicer wrapper, but I opened it because I was testing the camera out. It's just a USB-C cable. If you want a longer one, you can buy one, but the one that comes in the box is actually pretty long. I think you'd have no problem using this at your desktop. And the last thing that comes in the box, and I don't know if this is just for influencers or whatever, but it comes with this really nice Elgato collectible pin. I'm a sucker for enamel pins, so that was pretty cool. Now, I know you guys wanna know what this camera looks like, how it compares to other cameras that you can buy, and what the software is like, because we know that Elgato makes some of the best streaming software in the business. So let me go get set up. I'm gonna compare this camera to a couple of my other cameras and I'm gonna give you guys my suggestion on if I think you should buy this. Let's take a look. The first thing I wanna compare this to is my Logitech C920 and then my Sony a6500, which I know is a little overkill, but I wanna show you guys the differences between these cameras so that you can decide which the best one is for you. I'm also gonna show you the Camera Hub software, which shows you just how in-depth you can get when you're trying to change settings in this camera. Let's get into it. And here it is. Here's your first ever look at what footage from the Elgato face cam looks like. Now, 
I'm just gonna tell you right off the bat, it looks so much better than the Logitech C920 out of the box. I can't believe it. And if you don't believe me, take a look for yourself. This is the Logitech C920. You see how grainy it is? It's not 60 frames. You can make the Logitech C920 look good, but look at how much work it's gonna take versus basically out of the box. I've got color in my face. The blacks look black. You can see the color on my wall. Like this camera is amazing for what it is, but I don't wanna stop there. I wanna look at the software before we start really pixel peeping and comparing these two cameras against each other. This right here is the Elgato Camera Hub. Now, normally, if I didn't have this open in OBS, you'd see the video here, but I do, so you're gonna just look at my video down here because I'm using the face cam. The first thing here, it's got this FOV slider. Don't use this. They never look good. Like, it's just a digital zoom. I guess it's nice if you wanna like zoom in a little bit on your face, but this footage is gonna fall apart just like any other digital zoom. Don't, don't use it. The next thing is, I, I didn't change any of these settings here. The contrast, this is what it looked like out of the box. And like, I can change it and adjust it if I want to, but I'm pretty happy with how it looks right away. Now the exposure, this is where it gets interesting. So I have it on auto exposure. I did compensate. This is what it looked like out of the box with my lighting set up the way that it is. It's obviously too bright, right? But the fact that it has auto exposure and you can change it from center weighted, so the light in the center of the camera or from the average of the whole camera, the fact that it has a compensation slider is amazing because now my lighting is as perfect as I want it to be. I didn't need to adjust my lights. I didn't need to adjust the shutter speed or the ISO. But what's really cool is you can if you want to. If you toggle off the automatic feature, you can actually change the shutter speed of the camera. So if you wanna let more light in, now you're gonna get kind of bad blur, but you can do it. Or maybe you want it to be a little bit brighter. You can adjust that. The fact that you can change the ISO and the shutter speed and they put it in camera terms, not just exposure, gain, brightness, like they are really trying to make a piece of software here that is for camera people. I personally like using the auto exposure feature because I mean, just look at, look at how nice this looks out of the box. I can't believe it. But the white balance, this is probably my biggest gripe with the software is they did so much so right. They don't give you an adjustment other than temperature for the white balance. And they went the distance with the lens cap and the microfiber cloth. I just want a hue shader, right? Because if you look at me right now, I look a little pink because I, I, I'm a little pink, you know? And when I turn on automatic, it fixes it, it throws the greens in there, but why why not give me the ability? You let me change the shutter speed and the ISO, let me, let me change that too, no? And the last thing is this noise reduction, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go full cam so you can see this. Noise reduction is on by default, and if you look at my face, my face looks like pretty smooth and there's no noise in the room. When I turn it off, all of a sudden you do see some, uh, some noise in the corner. And you'll see that a lot of textures came back in my face. And if you look closely when I turn it off, it's almost like a, it's almost like a softening filter. From what I found personally, I liked turning it off and playing with the sharpness myself. Mess around, find the best settings for you, but the noise reduction, not really my favorite feature. Now I wanna start comparing these cameras against one another so you can see really how much better the face cam is than your standard C920 that all of us have had since we started streaming. So this is what these cameras look like when you stack them side by side. Look at the motion blur, look at the frames. It's 60 FPS out of the box and it's uncompressed. So you can see on my C920 side that it's, it is not a great image, it's not very sharp. It's kind of blurry, I look a little washed out. Just out of the box, this camera looks so, so good. If you're filming a video where maybe you're reacting to something or you're, maybe you're just a little camera in the corner, when you start really zooming in on this footage, you're gonna see how quickly the, the C920 starts to fall apart and that the face cam really holds up against it. Now here's the other thing I wanna talk about. I've had this Logitech C920 for years. I used it for forever. I swore by it. I was like, oh, I'll get some lights and I can tweak it and I can make it look really good. Obviously out of the box, it doesn't look good. You can play with those settings to get this camera looking in the same ballpark, not really close to the face cam. But the problem is when you reset your PC or when you unplug the camera or anything, 
I've looked up a million videos with a million ways on how to save those settings into the camera. If you find one, let me know, because to my knowledge, it doesn't exist. But the face cam has a built in flash memory unit that saves the settings from Camera Hub. So when I got this all dialed in, looking so good, Boom, it stays like that for forever. The other thing that's really amazing about this camera is that it's sending 1080p raw, uncompressed footage, which is the same technology that Elgato uses for the cam link. So it's not this like motion picture JPEG thing, it's, it's a real video file. And you can tell here, you can tell that it's so much sharper with the Elgato glass. You can tell that the sensor's bringing in more light. You can tell that it's got more frames. And for me, when I'm streaming, the last thing I wanna be worried about is did my camera forget the settings? Will it reliably turn on? And by the way, the Elgato face cam doesn't have a built-in mic in it, like the Logitech C920 does. So when I join Discord, my friends aren't like, hey, why is your voice coming through your webcam? I don't know. I don't, why is that a feature? I'm not quite sure. Now, before I get called a fanboy, I also want to compare this camera against my A6500 because I want to show you guys that while it is so much better than an entry-level webcam, it is still not quite the replacement for getting a cam link in DSLR, but it's damn close. Let's take a look. So on the left here, you have my Elgato face cam, and on the right, you have my A6500. Now, a couple things to know, I do have my A6500 running in 30 FPS mode, so it's not gonna be as smooth as the face cam, but that's a personal choice. I didn't, I didn't wanna change it, but you get the point. You've obviously got way more dynamic range with the mirrorless camera. You can see like here, my face is kind of blown out on the Elgato, but on the bright side, you'll see that there's like, there's a lot more options in what you see for shadows. It's also much sharper. Now, something I do wanna point out, the face cam has a fixed focus. So if you put your hand up in front of it, it's not really gonna focus. It wants you to be about anywhere from like a foot to four feet away from the camera, and it'll keep you in focus. But with my DSLR and even with the C920, you know, if I hold this book up to it, it'll focus on the logo perfectly here it's gonna be a little bit blurry. So there are some drawbacks to the camera. It's not like it's a perfect camera. I think that the colors look way nicer on my A6500, but we're talking about the difference between a $200 camera or a $500 camera plus a $150 capture card plus a lens plus a dummy battery. Look, you get it. it. It's a much more expensive setup on the right. For what it's worth for me, I think if you're looking to upgrade from your current existing like C920 or one of those Razer webcams or something of the like, this is a great improvement and it's only gonna cost you 200 bucks. If you're thinking about going the, the route of a DSLR and getting a cam link and all that kind of stuff, more power to you, that's the route I went, but this is not a bad alternative. I mean, just look at the difference. The color difference, like if you have one of these cameras right now, you owe it to yourself to get the face cam. Look at how good this is. And here's something I didn't even talk about. Because it has a swivel head, you can adjust how this is set up. You're not stuck having it just only be straight on like my C920 is. I really can't suggest this camera enough. And the thing that I'm looking forward to the most, this is the first release of this camera. This is the first release of the software for it. I firmly believe that Elgato has a lot of tricks up their sleeves to make this even better with time. I think the camera is really sharp. I think that the camera is really beautiful. I think it blows its contemporaries out of the water. And I think it's that nice midway point between whatever you got now or using your phone and the mirrorless camera solution. It's just really, really good. If you guys have any questions, please drop your comments down below. Once again, my name is Sean Thomas from the HQ Boys. Please like, comment, subscribe, and uh, tell me what you're most excited to use this camera for. For me, I think it's gonna be streaming from the studio. I just love the look of this thing. It looks so sharp. Until then, catch you guys next time. Peace.